Okay, welcome back X Traders, and we're going to dive right into ThinkScript because in the previous video we actually looked uh, at some uh, pre-made or already created scripts which were the S&P sectors and the S&P labels. All right. Um, so now we're actually going to jump into uh, looking at um, how to plot things, how to create not just column scripts, but how to actually create some of these chart scripts that we created up here. Um, and we'll even dive into a strategy one. So let's get right to it. We're going to start off, switch over here, start off with um, the X Trades column script. Okay, so the X Trades column script is a breakout script. Okay, and the whole idea behind the breakout script, as is uh, denoted here in the uh, comments, is we want something to alert us to a breakout. Now, the way breakouts normally work, just in case, uh, or just to be clear, just to be clear, the way breakouts work is what we want to be looking for is something like this. We have a bar, right, that does that. And then we have another bar that does something similar and maybe it has like a wick, right? And then we have another, we might have like a, like a down bar here, right, the next day, uh, which might even have wicks up there and down here. And then eventually it tries to go again. And so you get this sort of, you know, pattern where it's knocking on the door, it's knocking again, it's knocking again, it's knocking again, and it creates, obviously, uh, a sort of uh, resistance, right? Up against which it keeps bumping in. Eventually, eventually, it might garner enough support to break above that level, right? And then eventually, and not just close above, but it will actually open and close above, right? And then we can do one of two things. We can take a riskier trade, and this would be the riskiest one of all because we would, well, actually, let's say that this would be uh, risk B, right? And why do I say, whoops, that's a big fat B. Why do I say this is risk B? Because we would actually want this to do something like come back down and test this level, right? Before it actually takes off, right? This is what we would want to see. <clears throat> so the, this would be the risk or the, the type A trade, right? The type A trade, grade A is when it actually retested support and then bounced up and the breakout is confirmed and completed. The risky S, which would be grade C, would be if we actually take it somewhere here, or even here, we might decide that it's going to, because it broke above, then that's enough. We, we definitely don't want to do a D, which is it keeps bumping up against this support level, right? It bump once, bump twice, bump three times, bump a fourth time. Hmm, this looks like it's going to break. Let's go ahead and take the trade. That would be the riskiest because this could just as well wick down the next session and then keep wicking lower and then just dive down, right? It could end up being like some sort, some sort of a, a, a double or triple or multiple top or whatever, or just simply a failed uh, breakout, right? Uh, that would definitely be something that we do not want to do. That would be extremely risky. And, and actually imprudent, right, on our part. C would be the first acceptable risk level trade, which would be, okay, it broke above and it actually closed above the support level. Yeah, they might do that, but then they might also open up immediately at this level, right? Let me see if this will do undo. It might open up here and then just dive back right down below that supposedly broken support and then you know you're back down below here which is no good so this would still be a risky trade but some people still go for that 
I would consider that a lotto if I did do that because that is still very high risk. This is least risky or less risky, sorry, because it already closed above here and then it opened, well, this could be seen as one of two candles, either green or red, it either opened here and then took off, right? But it never actually touched the support line, so it never really tested the support. Um, or it opened here and then bullishly, you know, skyrocketed back up. If it did that, then that's a little bit better, but I, but it's still not grade A. Grade A would be that you actually want to retest that before it takes off. The problem is that some people don't want it to do that because instead of retesting, it just might rocket, right? So the, but regardless, the safest grade A trade would be after a retest, breakout and retest of support, then it takes off. So this is what we kind of want to be alerted, or this is what we want to be alerted to. All right, so this is what we're going to start looking at today, and we're going to do, uh, we're going to do it with a column script first, and eventually we're going to do it with a um, with a uh, 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 a chart script. All right, so <clears throat> okay, so let's get started with this script. So the first we want to define a length, a period length. So we define it 15. So that would be you know 15 bars, whatever. And we're defining the price, you know as close. So whatever the closing price uh, was for that bar, then that's going to be our price variable. So we have two variables. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to define a high price. So at some point, actually, oh, let me see if, can I get this drawing back? Oh, I don't think I can get that drawing back. At some point, right, we want to be able to find what the highest price was. So if we had, let me have to draw this back again. So let's say that we had the one bar here. All right, and then maybe it had another bar here, and then another one started down here, all right, and then over there, all right, and eventually it broke out. Well, that's pretty bad. Eventually it does break out above what we consider to be our support level, which is going to be somewhere in here, okay? Try to do that again. All right, so that's what we have, okay? So if, oh, that's still working. Okay. I have to end the drawing, but not erase it. There we go. Okay. So what we would want is to find some sort of a high price, right? So we're actually going to be moving backwards in time from whatever today is, and we're going to be looking at whatever the high price from back then was. Now remember, this candle has not happened yet, right? So we're going to define a variable, we'll call it high price, and we're going to set a counter to number two, okay? Remember where how we normally set this to zero? Well, here's one of those cases where you want to set it to two, and we'll see in a little bit why, because it's going to serve as an offset, all right? And it's going to go, that counter is going to count from 2 to whatever the length was, which is 15. Okay, so it's actually going to count 13 periods back. So that's 13 candles, right? Okay, and we're going to, again, we're using, we're introducing this idea of width, which, me, which means that every time that it counts, it's going to carry something with it, okay? And it's going to be a holder, a placeholder value, which we start at 0, okay? So every time that it counts, it counts backwards. Every time that it does that, it's going to do something with this holder variable. Okay, what is it going to do? Okay, if whatever the high, remember it's green, so it's a reserved word, whatever the high closing price, obviously, oh, sorry, whatever the high, not the closing price, whatever the high was for that day, okay, for the counter, which is going to start again at two. So we're going to start looking for the high on counter equal to 2. So that means that we're not going to look for the... Remember, this one hasn't happened yet. Okay. Let me kind of cross that out to see if that helps. This one hasn't happened yet. Okay. So this is the one that is current. So this is 0. This is 1 previous. So that's 1. This is 2 previous. So this is 2 and this is three previous, and so on. So this candle is three. So what's going to happen here is it's going to start counting or looking for the high of counter two, which means it's going to go zero, one, two, 
Okay, so it's going to start from here. So it's going to omit these two recent candles. All right, so it's going to start at two, and it's going to check to see if that high is greater than holder. So obviously holder is zero. So whatever the high for that first day, it's going to be greater than zero than the holder, which is zero. If it is, then it's going to take that high counter, right? Else, it's just going to keep the holder, all right, which would have been zero. Okay, so that's what it's going to do. All the way from two, it's going to go back, checking to see for, for whatever the high was on each day. And if, it, if that high is greater than whatever holder was, then it's go ahead, go ahead and replace it with that new high. Otherwise, it's just going to keep whatever holder was. All right, now we've defined this high price, what it's going to be, and that's actually going to use that fold function that we talked about, and it's going to go backwards in time. Now, well, that's great. It's going to be storing, it's going to be searching through the, the past 13 days, actually 15 because the first two don't count, right? But the past 13 days, looking for the high and sticking whatever that high is in holder. So at the end, holder is going to have the high of the past 13 days, okay? Now, that's great. What are we going to do with that? Okay, so we're going to define a trigger. I just happen to call it trig. Okay, if the close on day one is less than the high price, all right, which we define, let's say that the high is 70. If the close on day one, okay, is less than 70, less than the high price, and the close today is greater than the high price, right? So that's like, if this... If high price is somewhere up here, 70, and today the close on minus 1 is less than that 70, right? And also today's close, which would be some day in the future, which might be this one, is greater than that high price, whatever that level was, then assign trig the value of 1. Else, if close 2 is less than high price and close one is greater than high price so it's the same thing we're just moving close back from one to two right and we're moving this one from today to one right and the close is greater than the high price then we're gonna assign it a value two now this will make a little bit more sense in a, in a little while else if and this is the final else if this is the final if, if the close on day three is less than the high price, and the close on day two is greater than the high price, and the close today is also greater than the high price, then three. Okay, now let's take these, let's see if I can break these down for you a little bit clearer. Here's the first one, starting at if, then one. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to get an error. Else if, da, 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 then two. Else if, da, 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 da. Let me leave another space here, okay? So this is what's actually, I could even add this here just to make this a little bit cleaner for you guys to see. All right, so here we go. We have, we're going to do this, right? Else if we're going to do this. Else if we're going to do this, all right? Oh, and then else zero. So we trig is going to end up with either a zero, a one, a two, or a three, okay? And think about this. If today, if yesterday's close is less than the high price, and we're assuming that the high price is whatever the support level is, right? Because it's the highest that it's been in the past. If yesterday's close is below that price, and today's close happened to be above that price, then that could be a breakout. So let's give it a number one. Else, if day before yesterday is below the high price and today's or sorry yesterday's because this is the day before yesterday is below the high price and day and then yesterday is above the high price which means that it had already broke out right so that's similar to that first condition but also today's close is also higher than the high price and that means that you have two candles above the high price today's close and yesterday's close, okay? See, yesterday's close above, today's close below. 
right, and only the day before yesterday is below the low, then this is going to be given a number two. It's still a breakout. It could still be a breakout, right? But it has a better probability of being a breakout. Why? Because here we're saying that this one is below and this one is above. Here we're saying that this one is below and this one is above and this one is above. So there's two of them above the, that support line. That makes it a better quality uh, indicator. So we're going to assign it a number two. Okay. So you might want to pick number ones if you're risky. I take a lotto. You might pick number twos if you're being a little bit safer. Now, else if, right, if the close on the day before the day before yesterday is below, the day before yesterday is above, and the day and then yesterday is also above. So below, below, and then above. Below, right? Above, sorry, above, and then above. So how many are above? Two. This one and this one, right? And this one was below. So then we're going to assign it a number three because it's an even better indicator of a breakout. So else zero, which means definitely don't take that. Not even if it's, you know, not even if it's a lotto, you don't want to do that. Okay. So we're basically assigning trig zero, one, two, or three. And we're saying zero is no trade. One is it's an okay trade. It's risky. Two, it's less risky. It's pretty good. Three, that's the best. That's, that's what we're looking for. Okay. So let me just bunch this back up. I actually don't know if it would have worked if I left it like that. It might. Okay, let's see else. Okay, so there's, oh, and then this one. Okay, so there's our trig. Okay, so we're defining the trig here. And now we have a value, either 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so what do we do with that? We're going to add a label. Okay, and then yes, it's going to be visible from the get-go. And if trig is greater than 0, then it's a breakout, right? It's a different quality breakout depending on whether it's one, two, or three, but it is a breakout. So that label is going to have the text breakout. And we're going to give it the number right next to it. It's either a breakout of grade one, grade two, or grade three. Else, okay, if trig is not greater than zero, which means it's less than zero or equal to zero, then nothing, then just blank. It's not a breakout, right? And we're going to give it some color, just, you know, for show. So it's going to be color plum. Um, and then we're going to assign a background color to that label, right? Just to make it stand out some more. So if trig, which means if we have a value for this, which we should, then color yellow. Else, just leave a white uh, space, right? There's no, uh, there's a text that's going to say breakout zero or breakout blank, but it's got a white background. So that's not going to be a trigger. So let's go ahead and see this in action, uh, X trades column script. So we go over here to Market Watch, right? And we pick now. Here's something important. Market Watch is looking at the Russell 1000. Uh, the Russell, the main Russell is 3000. So that's a lot of, of stocks to sift through because it has to calculate everything that we just did. You know, it's got to go back 15 candles, only count 13 of them, and then store the values, and then compare it against yesterday's close, day before yesterday, and day before, day before yesterday. And that's a lot of stocks to go through. So remember, you don't want to get rate limited by the thinkorswim service. So let's do it with a smaller sample size. Let's do it with the S&P 500. All right, and let me get rid of this because this is a uh, clear screen. Okay. All right. Oh, I didn't turn off the drawing. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do, and we're going to remove this one, because remember when we did this script on the video way back when, I'm actually going to link to it here, uh, it was called the monthly yearly return script or something like that, uh, we actually had some issues because we had another M percentage column below, next to it, and then some of them were appearing up as, were showing up as loading or, or, or they weren't loading properly. You don't want to have too many of these scripts calculating at the same time. So let's go ahead and remove the three month script. Okay, we'll just do that. And let's go ahead and look for the X trade column script. Let's see if we can find that. Go to, oh, I guess we can't sift through. Okay, so let's just go and look for X trades. 
trade oops trades okay breakout column that's what I called it all right wait is that what I called it yeah that's it that's the one I called it okay all right so let's go ahead and put that one on add items right and okay here we go so we removed the one that was here and we got this one let's actually move wherever that is let's move it up okay so you can either just drag it or you can use the move up or down buttons over here and there we go x trades breakout column okay so what does that mean it means that these guys are not breaking out they have a white background and the, the these are this one does have a breakout so let's go ahead and take a look at the chart of comcast so let's go to comcast uh, charts cmcsa and boom there we go oh yeah that's that's pretty clear so it went back two candles right not this one not this one it went back at least two candles so starting here it started to find whatever the high was and whenever it found the high which looks to be this one right here where the high is 43.53 right as given by the high right there that's 43.53 40, oh wait, it's 43.38. This one is 43.53. This one is 43.11. So definitely 43.53 is the high, right? That it's going, that it found in the past 13 or 15 candles. You can clearly see, and then it has a breakout, right? And it has a breakout because these candles broke above whatever that resistance was. Let's go real quick to thick script okay right and remember that it was above zero so we gave it uh, the breakout text right and we assigned it a color plum but we also said that if the trigger had been given then it would be it would have a yellow background so that's why we see right the plum color text with the yellow background and right next to it you can see is the actual uh, trigger number, right? Let me see if, okay, we're going to say it's a breakout if it's greater than zero. And what level of a breakout is it? Well, we're going to add trig, the value itself, right? We concatenate it or appended that to the breakout. So that's what that means. It means that this is a two breakout, that this is also a two breakout, which is Boeing, which is actually one that I was looking at very recently. Okay. Boeing again it found the high which is probably that one and look at that it's got uh, three candles now above that okay and let's go over to let's find a one one there it is the Dow Dow I think that's the actual Dow company not Dow Corning that's the actual Dow as in the Dow Jones it's also a company let's go over here or it could be Dow Corning let me see uh, no that's Dow Inc yeah, that is Dow Corning. Okay, so um, this one has, this is the high here. It only has one candle above, right, that resistance. So it is a one, all right? That's why it's a one. Procter & Gamble, P and G, or PG. That is also a one, and this is the high right there, and it has one candle above. Now, let me just check because I kind of noticed something. These are both twos, Boeing and Comcast. But it seemed to me that Boeing had three candles above. So something happened. Let me see. That would be the high. It does have three candles above. So I'm not, I'm not quite clear what happened there. But you see the point. It's a very, very powerful script because you can get the breakout. And let me see if there is a three one doesn't seem to be one at least not in you know what probably not in the S&P 100 but we could probably find one in the Nasdaq 100 which should be here or sorry here because these guys rallied more here we go Nasdaq 100 and uh, breakout ones ones and ones okay we're at the bottom of the list can we find a three no not in the Nasdaq today was not a very good Ugh, it wasn't a very good day. I mean, it was a good day. It ended up positive, but mm, let's go see the sectors. I believe I have a watch list for the sectors. Um, watch list, top watch list. 
top 21 losers. Uh, S&P 500 sectors would be here, right? The highest was, oh, it's not gonna give me a, are you serious? It's not giving me a, okay, let me fix that real quick. Customize, let me get the description in here. Symbol is no good. Oh, here we go. Oh, there is no description. All right, well, that's not good. That's odd. There we go. Description, let's put that in. And we probably don't even need the symbol. We're gonna need it for a different list, but okay. Okay, utilities and real estate. Okay, uh, those were, wait, oh, sorry. Those were actually the lowest ones. The highest ones, information technology, okay. That's cool. Let's see. Um, IT. Where were we? Charts, I believe. No, Market Watch. Okay, so let's look in here. In information technology sector disease. Wait, by industry. Here we go. Information technology. Let's just get all the sector. That's a lot, but okay. There it goes. It's sort of working. Yeah, that was a, that's probably a lot of stocks. So we have a breakout two, uh, one, one. Actually, we're not seeing a three here. Okay. Well, we'll leave it at that because it seems like it's going to be a little bit. Oh, you know what? What am I doing? I can just sort this. Uh, there. Breakout two, here we go. One, two, yep, no three. All right, well, we couldn't find any in here. So um, the other one was real estate. Let's see if we can find anything in real estate. See if we can find any threes. There's all the ones, the twos, and no threes. All right, well, you get the picture. There's the script, and I believe that's a wrap for today's video because it's already 27 minutes long. So uh, we Again, what did we look at? We basically covered a very quick and dirty version of the fold command, but I did really want to get into that one. Okay, and I kind of gave you an explanation of how it works using a graphical. Uh, um, I'm going to try to post an image of um, of what I mean. Uh, uh, I have on an index card of how it goes back and looks for the high of the day, right, of the previous days, and how it assigns those values, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then from there on, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. And uh, in the next video, we'll look at uh, some plotting, okay? All right, so I hope this was, was clear enough. I hope this was clear enough, and if you have any doubts or questions, go ahead and drop a comment. If you like the video, go ahead and drop a like and drop a comment as well if you have any particular subject you want me to cover pertaining to either ThinkScript or Thinkorswim or anything else. And I will see you guys in the next video, so have a great one.